provisional government was a dual authority and worked closely with the Petrograd Soviet. The provisional government could not exercise full power over the military forces. And this was definitely the greatest weakness of the provisional government. The first order of the provisional government also granted freedom to soldiers and this order ruined the army because officers lost their authority and even arms according to this uh, order should be kept by the Soviets of soldiers in each particular unit. The main idea of this provisional government was that the structure of the future government should be arranged during the Constitutional Assembly. And the preparations for this assembly had begun. For the first time, for the first few months, the provisional government didn't have much tensions with the Soviet and it looked like Russia would continue the war and Russia would comply with all the treaties and all the alliances which were concluded previously. However, from May, the tensions between the government and Soviet came to the point that some of the ministers resigned and social democrats took over the government, these Menshevik leaders and especially Kerensky, who enjoyed popularity at that particular time. The Bolsheviks, from the very beginning of the provisional government, were freed from prisons or exiles. They didn't took any considerable part in the February Revolution at all because Lenin, Kamenev and Zinoviev were in Switzerland. Trotsky was in the United States and Stalin and Sverdlov were in Siberia. When they returned to Petrograd, first Stalin and Sverdlov returned and they thought that Bolsheviks should collaborate with other progressive forces. Lenin came from Switzerland in the sealed carriage arranged by the German government and returned to Petrograd and in his famous speech on his arrival at Finland station he changed the whole Bolsheviks policy because he declared that the February Revolution instead of giving Russia the genuine freedom created what he called the Parliamentary Bourgeois Republic and he immediately called for the overthrow of this government and the preparation for the genuine workers' revolution. After that, any collaboration between Bolsheviks on the one side and the Mensheviks and other parties on another side became impossible. This situation led to the coup at the beginning of July 1917. The Bolsheviks were trying to establish their power over that of the provisional government power. And for this activity, ruining all the advantages of the situation, leading to the Constituent Assembly, the order was issued to arrest Lenin, and he had to flee to Finland, to a place called Razliv, where he was hiding with his close friend and later the leader of the Third International, Zinoviev. Trotsky was arrested for a fairly short period of time. 
Lenin's view, a very narrow one on the February and October revolutions, was expounded in different works of art, including poetry, literature, and so on, produced in the 20s, and specifically by Eisenstein in his movie October. The February revolution the second revolution was presented as the one which could not provide Russian people with the actual freedom. And the leaders, the officials of the provisional government were portrayed as the ones who were dreaming of the establishment of the dictatorship over Russia or as monarchists by themselves. There is a very famous scene in the movie October where Kerensky thinks of himself as being Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, the whole picture definitely is pure imagination because all these so-called progressive liberal parties were playing an extremely important role in the abdication of Nicholas II and in the implementation of the firm constitutionally based structure in the country and they were working in order to prepare the constituent assembly to be elected and namely this assembly was to choose the future of Russia through the establishment of genuine democratic government supported by the majority of the population. In 1913, while lecturing before the students in Switzerland, Lenin told them that the proletarian revolution, in Marx's sense of this expression, would definitely happen, and they would be able to witness this event. However, he himself was too old and he wouldn't live long enough to watch the proletarian revolution occur. However, the turmoil which took place in Russia in 1917 was partly because of the war, partly because of the inadequacy of the supreme authority and partly because of the detrimental activity of intelligence uh, through different parties. This turmoil allowed the Bolsheviks, the most radical group among the wide progressive movement, to grasp power. Under the slogans of the possibility and even inevitability of the proletarian revolution in the peasant country, they implemented their dictatorship, which had nothing to do neither with the peasants nor with the workers. And still, this myth declared by Lenin was brilliantly represented by outstanding film directors, and Eisenstein was definitely the greatest among them.